Hi everyone, in this video it is finally time to talk about frame data. I know you guys have been very patient and waiting for this video and I've been looking forward to making it for you guys. I think frame data is a very important topic to talk about because there's a lot of elitism in gaming and fighting gaming and I think a lot of people they either like know about frame data or they don't and people who don't know about frame data they don't uh, ask about it and a lot of them don't really want to get into it even because it seems like such a uh, cumbersome and boring subject and so one question that you get a lot uh, from a newer uh, fighting game players when they are asking about frame data is do I need to know frame data is it necessary or can I just go through like my fighting game career and become a good player without knowing frame data is that possible and when you ask that question you usually end up with a very open-ended answer that isn't very clear uh, but I try to, like the same when I did my video on like how to use controllers or what controller to use and stuff, I try and give a, as clear and as useful an, a, an answer as possible. So I'm just going to go out here and say at the beginning of this video that yes, I absolutely do think that if you want to play any fighting game, especially Tekken, at anything but the very uh, most casual level, you do need to know some frame data. But the good news is, is that it, it is not hard, it is not scary, and it definitely is not mathematics. Uh, if you can understand that uh, 11 is a bigger number than 10, then you can understand frame data. That is basically as difficult as it's going to get. So, I mean, really don't worry about it. We're just going to uh, explain in this video how frame data works. And then there's going to be one more uh, video that I'm going to do uh, next that's going to be about applied frame data. So in this video, I'm going to explain what frame data is and how it works mechanically. And the next video is going to be applied frame data. And we're going to go into the game and I'm going to show you how you can use what you've learned about frame data to create a block punish or set up a counter hit move or something like that. So uh, in this video, I just want to explain the basics of how frame data works mechanically and what it is. And I think this is really the most important explanation because once you sort of get your head around this, it starts making a lot of sense. Uh, all right, so to start off, what what is uh, what are frames? Uh, what what it is is essentially a unit of measurement, and uh, what like, like the same as a kilo or a gram or you know uh, a mile. It's just a unit of measurement, and what is being measured is time. It's a unit of measurement of time, so it's the exact same thing as like a minute. Uh, the reason we need a specific unit for measuring time in fighting games is well. Uh, think uh, about like your daily life. What is the smallest unit of time that you ever use uh, in your daily life? It's probably the second and the problem is that a single second in a fighting game is Way too big like five or six different things can happen during a single second in fighting games And so it's not a very precise and not a very useful unit of measurement when you want to measure time in fighting games We need to go deeper. We need to find a better and more precise uh, Way of measuring time for it to make sense and this is where frame data comes in and because frame data is tied Mechanically to how the game works. It ends up being a very precise and very useful way of measuring time in fighting games uh, if you're one of my younger viewers, there used to be this thing back in the day known as a movie theater and it was kind of like a big room where people would go and sit in rows and watch a movie on a big screen. Uh, but uh, in those days, if you watched a movie on one of those screens, that movie would, unless it was some kind of weird Peter Jackson, like uh, Ridley Scott experimental clusterfuck, uh, it was projected at exactly 24 frames per second. Uh, and what that means is when you are watching uh, a video, any kind of video, be it a video game, a movie in a movie theater, or you know this video of me moving right here right now, you're not actually uh, watching movement. It is impossible for a screen to show you movement. That's not how screens work. What they have to do is they show you a series of still images that are flashing by very fast one after another. And when they do that so fast that the eye can't trace the individual images, it instead creates the illusion of movement. And so when you're watching a, a movie pro being projected at 24 frames per second, that means that you are watching 24 individual images flash by every second. And so that is what, what is creating the illusion of movement, and making it look like the characters on the, screens, uh, on the screen are moving. Uh, so one single frame, when we call say call something a frame, it's referring to one single of these still images. One of those images is one frame. 
uh, like I said, in movie theaters, it's typically 24 frames per second, and we've gotten so used, interestingly, as humans to watch movies in specifically 24 frames per second that if you try and watch a movie, uh, playing at the exact same speed but with a different frame rate. Uh, human beings are so used to exactly 24 that if it's more it looks like the characters are actually sped up and that they're moving around too quickly and it becomes very disorienting to human beings and so I think that's the reason that frame, uh, frame rate in movies is probably gonna forever be exactly 24. But in video games you know you're dealing with much smoother movement and higher frame rates and in a game like Tekken, uh, Tekken happens to run at 60 frames per second. So what this means is that when you're playing Tekken and you're looking at your screen, you are watching 60 frames, 60 still images, flash by every second. And so that's what create, what is creating the illusion of movement. Even when your characters are standing there breathing on the stage and doing nothing, you're watching 60 still images uh, every second, which is ridiculously fast. There's no way the human eye can trace these individual images and see them individually. And so it looks as though the characters are moving. Uh, I said that um, Tekken runs at exactly uh, 60 frames per second and so I made an amazingly beautiful graphic here in, in MS Paint just to illustrate this. This is something that I just want you to take away. Uh, uh, that in Tekken one frame, one of these still images is uh, exactly equal to 1 60th of one second. That is what 60 frames per second means. So uh, if I'm measuring something in frames, if I'm talking about one frame, I'm talking about 1 60th of a second. If I'm talking about 10 frames, like a 10 frame move, in Tekken, I'm talking about you know 10 out of 60 frames in one second, so I'm talking about one sixth of a second, uh, and so that's just a, a graphic I made because if if there's any kind of number you need to remember from this explanation, it's it's this. In Tekken, one frame is one sixtieth of a second. Uh, that's it. All right. Um, the reason uh, frame data and frames become such a useful measurement for measuring time in fighting games is that moves in fighting games have a specific amount of frames for their animation. So what this means is that when you press a button and your character starts extending their arm to do a punch and then that punch connects and then they retract their arm and they go back to their guard stance, um, the animation of that move has a specific number of frames. So there will be a specific number of frames until the move is extended, the arm is extended and the move connects and there's a specific amount of frames um, during the animation of you retracting your arm. This means that if I can find out exactly how many frames the animation of an attack is, I know exactly how fast it is. Because uh, the game runs at 60 frames per second, it is impossible for a move in this game not to be directly linearly tied to frame data. And what I'm trying to say is that you will never have a move that is like 11.53 frames or any kind of decimal. There's always an exact number of frames that something will happen in, in Tekken because if, the, if, it, if that wasn't true, then that thing would sort of have to happen in the space between two images. And it, there there is nothing in the space between those two images because we are watching a series of still images just being projected or shown one after the other. So there is no uh, possibility for something in Tekken uh, not to be uh, perfectly measurable in an exact amount of frames and so that's why it's such a useful measurement because you're always gonna have a move that's 10, 11, 12 frames like ducking down is gonna be a specific amount of frames any kind of animation, any kind of sidestep is gonna have a specific amount of frames because the animation is made up of these single images of these single frames and that's why it's when you're looking for this uh, smaller and more precise measurement of time instead of going into like microseconds and use that which would become very convoluted and involve a lot of mathematics if you use frames you're dealing with numbers like 10 11 and 12 and so it becomes a much much easier and much much more precise I'm just going to mention in this video quickly that when you are talking about moves in Tekken, because when we're talking about frame data, we're usually specifically talking about the frame data of moves. That's the most uh, common way to use it. What we're actually talking about is something known as impact frames. Nobody ever says this when they say like, oh, um, this is a 10 frame jab, or how fast is, is a down forward one? Oh, it's 13 frames. What, what they're actually saying is that it has 13 impact frames. Uh, that's like a technical term, but it's not used and so that's why it's a little bit difficult when you start learning frame data because a lot there's a lot of jargon and you watch people talk about this stuff and there's so much jargon but uh, there's no like technical explanation it's just assumed that everybody knows what you're talking about and so uh, it, like I had to piece all this information together from like context 
um, when I first learned it. But what an, what impact frames mean is that okay, like the example I said earlier, if you just press the one button and your character does a normal jab, uh, if we call that a 10 frame jab or we say that it's it takes 10 frames for that to come out, what it means is that there's going to be exactly 10 frames of animation between you pressing the button and the arm starting to extend and the punch actually connecting and registering with the opponent's hitbox. So it's not the entire animation of the move, it is from the move starting to come out to the move actually connecting with the opponent because that's the most uh, interesting part of the uh, the most interesting like interval to measure, right? If you press a button, you want to know exactly how fast the move is going to be able to reach your opponent. Because if you're in a situation where you are pressing a button and you're doing a move that is exactly 10 frames and you're facing an opponent and he's pressing a button at the exact same time, but he's doing a move that is 11 frames, even though we're talking about such a tiny sliver of time, 1 60th of one second in difference, your move is going to connect 100% of the time and your move uh, your opponent's move is going to fail 100% of the time so even though we are talking about units and measurements of time that are so small that there is no way for a human being to react to them uh, you can still use your functional knowledge of frame data to do things that appear almost superhuman uh, this is why when you're new to Tekken and you face somebody who's really good, it seems as though you just can't connect with anything and they're, ju they're just unbeatable. But it just means that they probably know that, okay, right now I have a window that is this big, that is exactly 13 frames, which means that as long as I do a move that is 13 frames or faster, I will connect 100% of the time and my opponent won't be able to do anything. And so that also ties into uh, block punishment and stuff. And that's just simply uh, how it works. I can mention here that when it comes to human beings and reaction time, it is usually said that what a human being can react to uh, uh, in time is uh, somewhere around 20 frames. It's somewhere in the region, depending on like your age and how good your rea reaction time is as a person, but somewhere between like 18 and 19 and maybe 23 to 25 frames, but somewhere in the interval around 20 frames is where, so exactly one third of one second, right, is when a human being can see a move. Uh, know what move it is, react to it visually, and then do something in-game about it. So that's why when you see a lot of these big low sweeps, for example, low-hitting launchers in Tekken that are reactable or seeable lows, they usually have frame data somewhere in the region of like 20, 23 frames. Because the theory is if you put that move at just the limit of human reaction time, a very sharp opponent who is uh, playing properly is going to be able to react to it and punish you. Uh, but if your opponent is not focused or you time it uh, well so that it's hard to predict, your opponent is going to eat it a lot of the time. They want to put those moves like in that range where they're difficult for humans to react to properly. Uh, the other really big part of frame data that is not impact frames that people talk about is uh, block frames. Uh, this is usually said uh, something like, how bad is this move on block? How, mu how many minus frames is it on block? And what they mean by that is completely different from impact frames. Is that, uh, say for example, we talked about, well, uh, take whatever, just take a move. Uh, let's take 4-2 with Gigas, because Gigas is on the screen right now, and 4-2 is like my favorite move with him. 4-2 with Gigas is a big swing of his arm forward like this. It is 15 frames to come out, meaning that uh, it's kind of on the slow side, but it's fast enough that it's very useful. Uh, but when this move connects with the opponent and they block it, it gets blocked, and so I haven't connected with my move. Um, there is a specific amount of time it will take Gigas before he retract his, retracts his arm and he goes back into his normal stance. And until he has retracted his arm and he's back in his normal stance, he is completely unable to block. The reason this is so interesting is that if that window my opponent has after he's blocked my move until I am able to you know, go back to my normal stance and block again is big enough that my opponent can get a move in that move will be completely unblockable and it will connect 100% of the time and that's what is known as a punish or a block punish. The thing about Gigas' uh, 4 2 that we talked about now is that when it gets blocked it takes Gigas exactly 9 frames to go back to his normal uh, blocking stance. The fastest move in Tekken typically with a couple of very specific exceptions is exactly 10 frames. 
What this means is that Gigas gets blocked, it takes him 9 frames to go back, but the fastest move my opponent can possibly do in that window is 10 frames. So it's going to take me 9 frames to get my guard up, but 10 frames for him to attack, meaning that he cannot get any guaranteed damage on me. I will 100% be able to get my guard back up and block any kind of uh, follow-up that he tries to do and so uh, he is not able to block punish this move this is what is, re is referred to as a safe move gigas 4-2 is safe and safe moves in tekken are like some of the most important best moves and the reason for that is that you can do them and as long as you don't whiff or miss maybe i should say is a less technical term with the move completely as long as it connects and your opponent just blocks it uh, you cannot be punished and so you're not going to eat any guaranteed damage. Conversely, if I was to use uh, Gigas' down to where he slams his hand uh, uh, down like this to launch the opponent, that's also a 15 frame move, the exact same speed. But that move, the window until Gigas has his guard up and is able to block again, is more than 10 frames. Meaning that if my opponent does a move that is 10 frames after he blocks that, it will connect 100% with Gigas and he will cre have created a block punish. So that was just a little bit of a, at the end there, a little bit of like basic explanation of how applied frame data works. If that didn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. We're going to go through all of that in the applied guide on frame data that I'm going to make next. But for what now, uh, for now, what I want you to take away from this video is that frames are a unit of measurement to measure the speed of moves and other actions in Tekken. One frame is 1 60th of one second and it is a useful unit of measurement because all the animations are tied to frame data meaning that it's going to be a very very precise way to uh, measure the speed of things in the game all right that was just a basic explanation of how frames work in tekken i hope it made sense if you have uh, any questions let me know and i will try and answer them uh, as uh, well as possible um, but just, uh, I mean, if, you, if you're completely new to fighting games and frame data, uh, don't let it frighten you, uh, because it is uh, useful and simple, and memorizing like frame data and a lot of moves, that is something that's just going to happen gradually as you play the game. Nobody's asking you to sit down and remember like hundreds and hundreds of moves and like do that kind of homework. Uh, you just need to know some basic stuff about your own character to start off with and then the rest uh, is just going to sort of come in organically as you try and get better and play the game more. Uh, Alright, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, look forward to the next video. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you and bye bye.